So we're continuing the Move Mountain series. This is week three, and uh, we're looking at Romans 12. So this morning we're going to continue on Romans 12, verse 9 through 13. This is what Paul wrote to the church at Rome. He said, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope and patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. And share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. This text, um, this this whole chapter is is amazing. And and as I shared with you before, Paul's letters uh, are formulaic in the sense that he lays out, he lays out an opening and then he lays out the theology behind um, what he's going to say about the practical aspect of living as a Christian, living as a follower of Christ, living as someone in the way he called it, right? So, and and, uh, many sermons are that way. We we start with uh, with an introduction, and then and then we get into the theology of it, and then we get into the practical aspect or the practical application. You know, the three points or the the things that we can do, and it's a great format. Except um, we're just looking at chapter twelve, and we're missing all of his theology. So I want to encourage you to go back and read, uh, starting in Romans one, and read up through chapter twelve because it's so good and it's so powerful. Um, I'm sure that there's someone listening who has some doubts about certain aspects of the Bible or certain aspects about God or certain aspects about Jesus that Paul will address for you directly. It's such a great book. But here we are in chapter 12, and, and we're in the meat of the practical aspects of what he's talking about. And you heard it as I read it, right? Love, he says, he comes at it and and he's, he's like telling us we need to love and love like no other. We, Christians need to be known as the people of love. We need to love so that people around us see it and are, 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 are almost in awe of how we can do that. Because that's what Jesus did for us. You know, at the last, at the last supper, Jesus is there um, with the disciples. And uh, you remember, he took off his outer garment and wrapped it around his waist, and then he got down on his knees and started washing the disciples' feet. And, and we've talked about this in the past. The, the act of him washing their feet was significant in two, two, more than two, I'm sure, but two ways that I want to point out to you. One is that he was giving them an example of what it meant for him to serve, to love them. Here he is, Jesus Christ. He's the Messiah. He's he's 100% God and 100% man. He came from heaven to be here with us. He is the King of kings, the Almighty. And he gets down and he washes the feet of his disciples as an act of love. And he calls us to do the same. He mentions it in the first verse that we read this morning. He mentions it a couple sentences below that. Love, love, love others above yourself. And then the second thing he was doing when he was washing their feet, and and the feet in the, your feet in the Bible, right? This kind of sounds funny, but your feet in the Bible are, uh, are kind of significant. It goes back to Moses. And um, when Moses recognized at the, at the burning bush, there was a story in Exodus where God calls Moses to free the people, free the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. They'd been enslaved for 400 and some years and God heard their cries and he calls Moses through a burning bush, a bush that's consumed by fire, but, n- but not being burned. 
And Moses is, is taken aback by that, and he starts to approach the bush. And God tells him to take off his sandals because he's on holy ground. Jesus is washing the feet of the disciples. And as he's washing them, he's not only serving them, but he's purifying them. Did you realize that when you love others around you in the name of Jesus Christ, when you serve them, you're helping them to take that step of faith where they will be purified by Jesus. How powerful is that? You know, we, uh, I, ha I have a lot of friends who, um, who have different beliefs and, uh, and, than I do, and we talk a lot uh, and often about these things. And we, sometimes we talk about heaven and hell and about, um, and about where... Uh, you know, if, if there is an afterlife, how is it parsed out? Can you be an evil person in this world and still have the same afterlife as everyone else? And we, we ask these questions and we debate and we talk. And for Christians, for Protestant Christians, there's, there's heaven and there's hell. And it's not about being good or bad. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about if, if we come to him humbly and repent of our sins and take him into our heart, begin to develop a relationship, he's the one that saves us. We can't save ourselves by works. When, and, and, and often when I get into debates, uh, we, we end up on, on, on the topic of stuff and, and desires, right, and, and, and self. And, and here's the distinction for us and for Paul as he's writing this letter. There, there is an eternal view. There's something that goes, that goes beyond this life. Jesus talks about it. The scriptures talk about it. Christianity is unique because we can't save ourselves by the works we do. The works we do are a reflection of the relationship we have with Jesus Christ. Right? I, you, have, you, you might have kids. I have kids. I do things for my kids, not because I have to. Well, okay, so sometimes I, I do because I have to. But, but for the most part, I do things for my kids out of my love for them, not because I have to. That's Christianity, right? That's the love that we're talking about. I love Jesus Christ so much that I'm going to do what he asks me to do. I'm going to go beyond what he asks me to do. I'm going to try and anticipate what he wants. It's like buying a present for a loved one. Like they, they, don't, they don't come to you and say, hey, I want this. And then you go and buy that. Sometimes that, that makes it easy, right? Come on. But at, but. But I try and, out of, out of what I know about them, I love them and I try and find a gift for them that they'll appreciate because I want them to enjoy it. The long and the short of it is, if, if, uh, if, the other, if there are many other religions in the world and most of them are based in in, in, in keeping the rules. And Christianity is based not in keeping the rules, but in keeping the relationship. In loving God and loving our neighbors above ourselves.
It's being selfless. So week one, we talked about how um, it's the renewing of the mind, right? That Paul says you need, to, you need to give your bodies as a living sacrifice, and, and you need to have your minds renewed. So we need to be sharp on our theology. We need to know what we're talking about. We need to know um, how we should act as followers of Christ in our culture. How do we love in, in our culture? And Paul says, by the renewing of our minds. And then he starts talking about the body of Christ. And we talked about that last week, about how we're all the body of Christ. And when one piece of our body hurts, the whole body hurts. But we also, as the body, have all of these gifts. And each of us is given a portion. And we work together. And together, lifting, we can change the world. And, and how powerful that is right now in the midst of, of the, in the, in the strife of our country when it comes to, to racism and oppression and how the church can really, really speak into and powerfully change everything right now. Because all of us using our gifts together, and, that, and that's what we're called to do. We're called to do that not only on a national level with a huge crisis on our hands, like a, a, a huge mountain that we absolutely need to change. But it also, it also can take place in, in our little local community with us using our gifts and loving sacrificially. We can change people's lives. We can change people's eternal destinies. We can tell them that you don't have to run on the, on, on, on the hamster wheel and work so hard to try and do this and that and the next thing that the world is calling you to. But we have the truth and the truth will set you free. And it's in the renewing of your mind and it's the body of Christ bringing that all together. And then Paul gets into this, this section and he tells us to love, 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 love. And then he says, hate, he doesn't mince words. He tells us to hate evil. And and come on, you you know, I, I live in the world too. Evil doesn't start with this big, huge thing. You know, we talked about it a little last week about how, how you know, a little thing left unchecked can turn into a mountain. And the world is about that. Now, don't, don't be offended by this, but, but come on, if, if, you, if, you do, if you do like the lottery, the scratch-offs and stuff, man, when I was a kid, that stuff came out, and it was like a dollar a card, and, and, then, and, and you'd get a card, and you'd scratch it off, and, and I, don't, I don't do any of that because of my own personal views and, and, and issues I had with that. I got a little crazy with it and, and got, you know, so, but he, here's the deal. It just starts with a dollar. And 30 years later, they have $20 cards. You can go in, it, it's almost like going to Atlanta. You can drop $20, you can drop $100 and get five scratch-offs. We, it just starts so small, and, and, and the world kind of tries to sell it to us. You know, porn is terrible. It, cor it, it, it corrupts your mind. There's images that you can't, you, you can't get out of your head, and, and it gets marketed to our children in songs and in subtle images, little teeny tiny things that, that over time, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and then lust is okay. And we, ha and we wonder why we have such a problem in our country with this or that or the next thing. Paul is keenly, in his time, in his place, he knew it too. They, it, it's, not, it's not an American problem. It's not a New Jersey problem. It's not, it, it is a human problem that has gone on and on and on and on and on. And, and no matter what time and no matter what culture, people understand it and Paul understood it. And he called it out. He said, hate, 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 hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Hang on to it. Grab it. Be passionate about it. Care. 
And then he goes on and he tells us, he kind of he lays it out in a no excuses way. He says, he says, honor yourselves above others. He says, serve God with enthusiasm, with fervor. He says, be joyful in hope and patient in affliction and faithful in prayer and share words of encouragement be, be, and, and, be, and practice hospitality. He gives us like this list of stuff. And I think he's laying it out because I don't know about you, but, but I, I like to come up with excuses for not doing things. I, you know, uh, honor others above myself. Well, uh, you know, that, if that, 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 the Bible tells me so. Jesus did it. He gave me examples. I'm a pastor. I should do that. But, 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 but if I do that, then that might inconvenience me. But if I do that, then maybe this, you know, and, and we, I get good with it. I don't know about you, but I get good with it. Well, if I, if I did that, then, then, you know, my kids might not have everything that I want them to have. So, mm, I, you know, maybe I should love my kids more and then I'm just not going to do that, right? Or, or, you know, when it comes to being, being joyful and hope, well, I'm kind of joyful and, and I'm kind of hopeful, but, you know, this COVID thing is really getting me down and I'm really getting scared and worried about it, worried about it. And, and I don't know, I don't know how to quite be, be joyful and hopeful in, in the midst of this. And, 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 you know, and, and, and I know that I can rely on God for, for everything. Um, and I know God can conquer everything, but, but, uh, but I, you know, I, how, how do I, how do I love God that much where I proclaim joy and hope and at the same time uh, have, you know, last week we talked about having one foot in heaven and one foot on the earth when the kingdom of God we talked about. Well, how, how do I love God knowing God can do all things and, and really, really, truly believe that and be joyful and hopeful about it in the midst of all the, the, the safety standards and and uh, and people dying and being sick and 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 I and you know we can do it, we can do it because we we're filled with the Holy Spirit and we can bridge that gap. We can be joyful and hopeful, as long as we don't let the excuses take over. You know, it it I, I get caught in it too. So that I'm not I'm I'm trying not to preach at you. I'm part of the the problem. You know, he says, uh, practice hospitality. And, and you know, I, I try and be hospitable. But I would say that I don't, I'm not sacrificially hospitable. I'll be hospitable as long as it doesn't inconvenience me too much. And that's kind of what Paul's getting at. He, he's coming after us and he lays out this list in a way, and, he, and he's, he started off with love, right? You got to love. And then he said, hate what is evil because it's so easy for us to come up with these excuses and not do this stuff. But here's the bottom line for Paul. And, and this is, so this is a backwards kind of sermon where all the practical stuff is up front, right? Uh, uh, honor others, serve God uh, with fervor, joy, be joyful in hope, be patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share. Those, that's, that's a to-do list if there ever was a to-do list. But it comes back around to the beginning of Romans where he where he says he's talking about the eternal consequences of our behaviors and, and how we have to have faith in Jesus Christ and we have to be fervent in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. We should be focusing our energies on being able to share that good news because the, the consequences are not here and now. They're here and now as well as then and later. Your neighbor, 
your friend, your parent, your child, your loved one, the person in ShopRite that was in front of you in the line, the hundreds of people you drive by, there are eternal consequences for every one of them. And God has put us here as the body of Christ to share the good news of Jesus Christ. There is a heaven and a hell, and there is a now and a later. And we are called to proclaim heaven here and now and later by faith in Jesus Christ, not by your works, but your works are a response to the depth of your faith. I'm still working on it. I was totally straight with you this morning, more than I enjoy being, because it's challenging to sit here and tell you that I make excuses for not doing the stuff that I'm supposed to do, that God's calling me to do. But the reality is, is I'm a lot better today than I was a year ago or 10 years ago, and I want to challenge you to a journey that you, that you move in a deep way, connecting with God, growing with God, loving God, so that your responses that you do in our communities that have eternal consequences for our neighbors, our friends, our loved ones, that you do it out of love, out of a response for love of them and love of God. So I want to challenge you. Take this list. It's right here. It's only like, it's only four verses long. Paul's saying, this is what it looks like. This is the stuff that comes out of us when we love God. And he is pleading with you and with me to love God so much that this just flows out of us naturally. So this morning as we, as we close out, I just want to offer you an opportunity to connect with God in a deeper way than you are right now. To take a step of faith. To take a step of faith uh, and, and especially right now in this time, in this country, there, there are so many ways that we can have a positive impact. We can have a positive impact when it comes to COVID-19 as people and as a church. We can have an immense reality-altering impact on racism This is an opportunity for us to grow in our faith and have tremendous impact. So would you join me? Would you join me in taking a step? I want to invite you to pray as we close. Let's pray. God, we come to you this morning and we give you thanks. For you so loved the world that you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into the world so that all would be saved. And you've come and you've loved us. And you've saved us. Help us to love God. Love the way that you loved us. Help us to get rid of all the excuses. Help us to Put away all of the sin, all those little things that have turned into mountains, God, because we know you can conquer them. You can, you can uh, demolish the mountains that, that have grown out of those little things in our lives. We can make a tremendous impact, God, because you, you are the one that works through us because of the Holy Spirit. You are the one, God, that we respond to out of love. So, God, we just we come this morning in prayer, offering our hearts, God. And if, if, if you could just help us, help us with our commitment. Continue to bless and love us. 
God, we will love you back in ways that change this world. And it's in Christ we pray. Amen.